What is up my homie Hippogriffs? Welcome to another rockin' video made by the GameCube guys. We are continuing our gameplay of Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. We just graduated at the top of the class at Hogwarts, and now it's time to show the rest of the globe who's boss here in the World Cup. In World Cup mode, you can choose one of nine countries. England, USA, Japan, Germany, France, Australia, the Nordic team, Spain, or Bulgaria if you somehow earn 65 Quidditch cards. Today, as you can tell in the title of this video, we are starting our Quidditch quest to glory with Australia. Team Oz, you're already in the final, mate! And here we go, week one, round one, Australia versus France. Guys, so it's game one. Australia's run to fame as we're taking on France. We're playing at home to start off the season, and this first game, I believe, is my worst game yet. It's not as easy as it is back at Hogwarts because of the new broomstick that you chose. The Nimbus 2000 is really somewhat of the pro difficulty if we were to compare it to Madden. Uh, the rookie difficulty is the Comet 260 that you had in Hogwarts. And as you can see here, my gameplay, like I did in Hogwarts, is to steal the ball and score. And no matter where you shoot it, you're going to put it in. And as you can see, if you shoot it from far away, they're going to block it. And this is going to be my first score because I actually decided to shoot... Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, here we go. And I grew really accustomed to the far left hoop because, I don't know, the keeper did a really great job of blocking it any other way. So I steal the quaffle here, but then I get really lazy and throw a duck. And France, their Quidditch, their uh, secret power bar at the top gains a lot because of the, hot, because of the combos that they pull off. And I am yet to achieve and like really understand combos at this point. I'm still, you know, somewhat of a rookie here as I put in my second goal. Once again, like, my strategy was just steal the quaffle and move the quaffle as quickly as I could down the pitch and score. And in this game, it's really strategic because the game gives you so much credit for completing numerous passes in a row and, you know, successfully using a bludger. And at this point, that really just wasn't my gameplay. I was just run and gun, put as many points on the board as possible, as quick as I could. And that really bit me in the ass here in the first game as France gets on the board there. So now it's 30 to 10. And at this point, the bars at the top are pretty even, but as you can see from now on, I'm going to really struggle to move the move my bar up. I I don't really understand the combos at this point. I'm still just you know like eh, I'll just hold down R at this point, no big deal. And by the end of the match, you'll see the how I really struggled. And there's me putting in another one. And oh boy, there we go. I have the announcers, good old. Uh, what's his face? Ludo? Yeah, Ludo, Ludo Bagman. And the uh, co commentators Arnold Vogler today. Uh, so, this is the first game, and I chose Australia because the real. Actually, I chose Australia just because I wanted to go there. This game does a great job of 
like no team is better than the other one. It's truly you against the computer. There is no ratings, which is a really interesting strategy that this game comes into play. It's not like if you were to play a football game and one team is better than the other one, the Patriots are better than the Browns. Or, you know, if you're gonna play like Tony Hawk, you know, your your uh creative player is gonna be really bad while as Tony Hawk is going to be really good. This game does a great job of, you know, no matter what team you pick, you will win and lose based on your skill and your skill alone. And of course, the artificial intelligence of the other team. Um, and right now, here in the World Cut mode, I am playing on the quote-unquote Pro Difficulty, which is also known as the uh, Nimbus 2000 rating. And uh, speaking of rating, GameSpot gave this game a 6.5, which isn't that bad for uh, a Harry Potter game back in 2003. That was the year this game was debuted. Uh, it was debuted for the Xbox, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and the Game Boy Advance. Though the Game Boy Advance game was rated a 4.5, which, you know, I can't really blame them. Can't, I don't know. I wouldn't buy this game for the Game Boy Advance because I can only imagine how small the players would be in that rate. It wouldn't be as fun as France puts in a special move. Another a great thing about the Australian pitch is that I really like it. Like, it looks like we're straight off the Outback, and I believe that the noise, it's kind of childish, the noise that the game makes once you score, once you put the clock in through the hoop, is really, I really like it, it's a really cool noise. A lot of them are kind of lame, but I think this is a really great environment, and, oh, it's, here we go, France now having their special team move here, kind of nifty. Yeah, great job, keeper. Uh, yeah, weird thing about this game is that you can't stop a team special move or any special move at that rate. It just goes straight to the cutscene and you're pretty much screwed. There's no way of stopping it. And in addition, you can't even control the keeper at all. The keeper is totally the computer no matter what difficulty you're on. So. You know, your last line of defense is based on the computer. You don't have a say in it. So, score 7 to 30 right now, and once again, I go for that left hoop. I have something about it. Though I am winning on, in the, on the scoreboard currently, as you can see, France's bar is quite larger than mine, and you'll, as you'll see by the end of the game, that the match really comes down to the... Golden Snitch Chase. But going back to this game, why GameSpot gave it a 6.5, they, they really judge the game as sluggish. And I kind of agree with that. You know, according to the movies and to the books, and I read the books, when they described Quidditch, it seemed like such a magical sport, and obviously it is, but they described it as so quick and fast-paced. And in this game, sometimes when you have the Quidditch I mean, when you have to finish. When you have the coffee, you're just going so slow. And I believe that if they actually like, instituted a like a turbo bar or something, it would have made the game much more interesting. Like, say instead of completing like completing numerous passes and you gain like the dodge ability by pressing X or using a bludger, you gain like a like a turbo boost or something. I mean, that would have aided the game a lot, considering no players have any ratings. You understand where I'm going with this? No player is ranked higher than another one. Everyone is the same rating. And I, I believe that the turbo button would have been really cool in this game. So I understand where GameSpot's going with that, and the fact that you know, it's kind of sluggish. They're going slower than maybe J.K. Rowling would have, <laughs> would have envisioned it. She would have envision this game to be much more quick and fast paced. But me blabbing, I totally ignored play by play here. So I'm up 120 to 30 at this point. And if you catch the golden snitch at the end, you score 150 points. So I just simply remember at this point, I'm not even trying to gain anything up top there. I'm just trying to score as quick as I can because I know that I'm going to be screwed at, by the end of the match and 
France scoring right here using this special move doesn't help. So basically I was just trying to get to a 150 point lead and even if I didn't catch the snitch at the end I would still win and I end up not doing that. Completing combos, I think I end up shooting from a real far distance and they stop me. Yeah, as you see there, I think he got scared by the bludger as well. And I think I fail once again here. I might even pass him. And I shoot and I'm stopped again. And here we go, it's the snitch chase. And I'm actually in the lead to start off the snitch chase and I use the whole thing, use all the boost I can, I go for it once and then I eat Francis dust at this point. There's no chance of me coming back because their speed boost is a lot, a lot bigger than mine. I'm pretty much just fodder. And there's nothing really much you can do at this point. I know I'm going to take the L. Nothing I can really do. And now we can see the wonderful cutscene of France catching the snitch. Yay, I lose. Alright, not the way I wanted to start off the tournament, but I know I can get revenge because you play each country twice in the tournament. And this is the final score, 190 to 130. I got two Quidditch cards, whoop de do. So I lose the first match, not a big deal. I scored 130 points, which is a lot. And of course, I'm not going to do a rematch. I'm going to continue because I'm a man. And we can go to the, the scores. So Japan got a win, Nordic team. Yada, yada, yada. League standings. Yeah, I'm near the bottom, but hey, it's only one, match, one game in. So we lose our first game. That means that you have to stick around go to game two against England and see if we came out with a W or if we're starting the season 0-2 and at the bottom of the group tables. And we will see you next video.